जय बिंबाधर धर शिव हर रे शिव हर रे शिव हर रे शंकर जय अभयंकर सांब सदा शिव शिव हर रे शिव हर रे शिव शिव हर रे शिव हर रे शिव हर रे जय शिव शंकर जय अभयंकर शंकर जय अभयंकर जय गंगाधर जय बिंबाधर जय गंगाधर जय बिंबाधर बाघम धर शिव हर रे शिव हर रे शिव हर रे बाघम पर धर शिव हर रे शिव हर रे शिव हर रे
down to Sri Ramakrishna, who is stainless, eternal, infinite, and who has taken a human form out of compassion for the devotees. Dear sisters, brothers, and loving children, Om Namo Narayanaya. Sri Ramakrishna had many householder disciples. He had boundless love for Balaram and his family. Balaram revered the master and invited him together with many devotees to his home regularly. At Balaram's home, the master frequently went into Samadhi, dancing, singing and talking about God. Those of the master's disciples and devotees who could not go to Dakshineshwar visited him at Balaram's home and received spiritual instructions there. He often asked Balaram to invite young disciples like Rakal, Swami Brahmananda, and Narendra, Swami Vivekananda, to his house. The master said, These pure souls are the veritable manifestations of God. To feed them is to feed God himself. They are born with special divine attributes. By serving them, you will be serving God. Every year, Balaram celebrated the chariot festival of Lord Jagannath in his home. The master's presence greatly enhanced the joy of the occasion. The devotees would decorate Lord Jagannath's wooden chariot with flowers and flags and then place the image in it. There was a small courtyard in the middle of the house around which overhung the verandas of the upper floors. After the worship, the chariot would be pulled in circles by devotees on these verandas while a kirtan party followed, singing devotional songs. Swami Shadananda described the chariot festival of 1885. A kirtan party came. The master and the devotees 
joined in the singing as the chariot was drawn. Where else could one experience and witness such a flow of bliss, of divine ecstasy, and such sweet, graceful dancing of the Master? Pleased with the pure love of the pious family, Lord Jagannath did indeed manifest himself in the image on the chariot and in the body of Sri Ramakrishna. It was a rare sight. After a few hours of singing, cooked food was offered to Lord Jagannath. The master and the devotees would partake of the prasad. That joy and bliss continued until late at night. The following reading is taken from a guide to spiritual life by Swami Brahmananda, who is a direct disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. Ramakrishna Mission, Hardwar, 1912. Swami Brahmananda says, Everyone wants happiness. Who wants pain and misery? But how can we attain happiness? Not by running after the fleeting pleasures of the world and ignoring God. Pray to the Lord. In whatever way you call on Him, you will certainly be blessed and get His vision. You have been shown the right path by the Guru. Now follow it with faith. Be up and doing. That is to say, pray regularly, read the scriptures and keep holy company. Don't be discouraged if after a little practice you do not realize God. The ocean is full of precious pearls. If you don't get them in one dive, that does not mean the ocean is without pearls. Cry to him for his grace like a child. Can a mother stay away after hearing the cry of her child? So it is with the Lord. He reveals himself to the devotee who has longing. Belur Math 1916 one should follow a routine. Steadfast devotion is extremely important. Make a routine of everything. Meditate and repeat your mantra regularly. With an irregular life, you cannot be successful. When a watch starts losing time, one sets it right again. Then it gives the correct time. Similarly with the mind. For various reasons, the mind becomes unsettled, but one can regulate it by keeping holy company. One can avoid many troubles and obstacles if one tries to follow implicitly the instructions of holy people. By assimilating their teachings into one's life, one inherits the spiritual treasure they possess and thus becomes blessed. Rules are necessary as long as the mind is not under control. Unless you have a regular routine, the mind will not allow you to do anything constructive. A routine allows you to control your mind. Bilur Math 1918 God's name purifies the body and mind. What is the goal of spiritual practices? It is to realize God and attain His grace. First, remove all impurities which have accumulated in the mind birth after birth. After, otherwise, there will be no possibility of spiritual progress. One cannot attain God's grace without purifying the mind. Sri Ramakrishna used to cite a beautiful illustration. If the needle is covered with mud, the magnet cannot attract it, but when the mud is washed away, the needle is naturally drawn to the magnet. Similarly, impurities of the mind are washed away if one thinks of and meditates on God and prays to Him with tears of repentance. The moment the mind becomes pure, divine grace flows and one obtains the vision of God. Controlling the Restless Mind Once a devotee asked Swami Brahmananda the following question, Maharaj, how can I control my restless mind? Maharaj replied, 
Practice japa and meditation regularly. Try to bring the mind under control and practice meditation. If you continue the struggle for two or three years, the mind will gradually be calm and you will feel an unspeakable bliss in your heart. In the beginning, japa and meditation seem fruitless. It is like swallowing a bitter medicine to get rid of fever. As you continue your sadhana, spiritual joy will gradually flow in you. People work so hard to pass examinations, but God's realization is far easier. Call on God sincerely with a serene mind. The devotee then told Swamiji, Maharaj, your words fill me with hope, but sometimes I feel depressed. I think all my spiritual disciplines are in vain since I have not had any realization. Swamiji replied, Do not be depressed. Work must have its effect. If you repeat the Lord's name wholeheartedly or half-heartedly, it must produce results. Practice spiritual instruction systematically for some time. You will get peace and joy. Meditation gives not only mental peace but also physical health and you will not suffer from illness. So one should practice meditation even for good health. If you think that you will practice meditation when the mind is calm, you will never do so. You must strive for both simultaneously. The desires of the mind appear and disappear like bubbles. During meditation, think of them as unreal. The more you eradicate your bad tendencies, the more your good tendencies will fill the mind. Meditation and Japa It was 11 o'clock on Sunday evening. Swami Brahmananda was sitting quietly in his small room. The monks brahmacharis and devotees came and took their seats after bowing down to him. Addressing them all, Maharaj said, It is good to rise early. The best times for practicing self-control are when night passes into day and day passes into night. Nature is then peaceful a favorable condition for practicing japa and meditation. The mind can be controlled in two ways. First, one should go into a solitary place and concentrate the mind on a particular object by making it free from all other thoughts. Second, one should develop the mind by thinking good thoughts. The best food for the mind is meditation Japa and Noble Thoughts Practice Japa and Meditation Daily After meditation, one should sit at least for half an hour because at the time of meditation, one may not derive its desired effect. It may come a little later. For this reason, an aspirant should not occupy himself with worldly thoughts or engage in secular affairs immediately after meditation. Practice more japa on auspicious days. The whole world is filled with fear. Subdue the subtle enemies such as lust, anger and greed. At every step you will have to control your worldly desires, for otherwise they will certainly ensnare you. Pray silently and strengthen your willpower. Gradually, everything will become favorable for you. May we be blessed with success in our spiritual journey. Hari Om Tat Sat.
Dear sisters and brothers, let us try to concentrate our minds on the radiant form of God seated in our hearts. One who is skilled in the art of non-attachment attains peace. Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 5, verses 11 and 16, The yogi, abandoning attachment, performs work only with the body, mind, the intellect and the senses for the purification of the heart. Those whose ignorance is destroyed by knowledge of the self, that knowledge, shining like the sun, reveals the Supreme. Om Shanti Shanti, Shanti Om Purnamada 
children. Last week we left Hanumanji in Lanka. After meeting Sita, he wished to assess Lanka's military strength and meet Ravana. Hanuman was hungry and enjoyed the fruits in the orchard. He decided to provoke Ravana by uprooting the trees. The guards heard the noise and when they came to investigate, Hanuman attacked them with his mace. Ravana sent his son, Prince Akshay, to capture Hanuman. The prince, accompanied by his army, set off to capture Hanuman. However, within a few minutes, Hanuman killed the prince and most of the army. Ravana was consumed by grief and rage. Next, he sent his son, Prince Indrajit, to capture Hanuman. After a fierce battle, Prince Indrajit used Lord Brahma's weapon against Hanuman. Hanuman decided to surrender to Lord Brahma's weapon out of respect and also it would give him an opportunity to meet Ravana. He allowed himself to be bound and was taken to the palace. Hanuman advised Ravana to release Sita. He said, you have committed an unpardonable sin by abducting Sita. I advise you to send her back to Rama and ask for his forgiveness. If you do not, your kingdom will be destroyed. Save yourself and your people. Ravana was not willing to listen to the good advice. He became infuriated and ordered that Hanuman be killed. However, Vipishana, Ravana's younger brother, intervened, reminding the king, It is not permitted to kill a messenger. Then we shall punish him. Set his tail on fire. Let him return home that way, Ravana declared. As the king's men wrapped Hanuman's tail in cloth to set it on fire, 
The tail grew longer. The more they rapped, the longer Hanuman's tail grew. Infuriated, Ravana ordered, set it on fire. With his tail on fire, Hanuman flew into the sky. He flew lower over the city and set each building, temple, palace and garden on fire. Flames shot high into the air as he flew over the Ashoka garden to ensure that Sita was safe. Bowing before her, he assured her that Rama would soon rescue her. Hanuman received a great welcome from his warriors. They hurried back to tell Rama the good news. Hanuman gave Rama Sita's crest jewel and said, Sita is safe but weeps for you. Your name keeps her alive. Rama embraced Hanuman warmly and praised him for his bravery, saying, You have achieved what no one else could. I shall not be able to repay you, dear Hanuman. Rama and Sugriva began preparations for the war against Ravana. Meanwhile, back in Lanka, People were living in fear. If Rama's messenger was so powerful, single-handedly, Rama would be far more powerful. Mandodari, Ravana's favourite queen, pleaded with him to return Sita and make peace with Rama, but her advice went unheeded by Ravana. When Ravana heard that Rama and his army were at the shore ready to proceed to Lanka, Ravana called a special assembly with his ministers and advisers. The ministers, hoping to receive a reward or secure a better position, flattered Ravana by praising his strength, saying, No one could defeat him. The lone voice of Vibhishana cautioned him, saying, Rama is no ordinary man. He has truth on his side. You are wrong to capture his pure wife. Return Sita and save the people of Lanka. Lust or desire... Anger, greed, and pride lead one on a path of destruction. Seek Rama's pardon. Ravana was furious and banished Vibhishana from Lanka, calling him a traitor. Vibhishana warned again, Do not underestimate Rama's strength. It is said that Rama is an incarnation of Vishnu sent to earth to destroy all that is unholy. With his powers, he will destroy Lanka. Why do you tempt such fate? I fear no one, Ravana roared. You are a deceitful traitor and jealous of my success. Vibhishana calmly replied, I want to save you, dear brother. Many selfish people here claim to be loyal, but few will speak the truth. Then go, shouted Ravana. I have no place in my kingdom for the weak. Vibhishana left the palace and went to meet Rama. Arriving at his camp, Vibhishana declared, I am the brother of Ravana. I tried to convince my brother to return your wife, but he refused, so I left Lanka. I wish to join you and fight at your side. Rama responded, Vibhishana, you have rejected evil for good. You are welcome here. Vibhishana took refuge in Rama and was assured of the Lord's protection. Lakshmana and Sugriva crowned Vibhishana as king of Lanka. Now Rama had to formulate a battle plan. The first objective was how the army would cross the deep ocean to get to Lanka. Vibhishana suggested asking Varuna, the god of the sea, for his blessing. They all sat and prayed sincerely. Rama prayed, O lord of the ocean, be gracious and allow us safe passage. Rama fasted and prayed for three days, but did not receive a response from Varuna. Rama stood on the shoreline of the great ocean and spoke to Varuna. Hear me, he called. I am Rama. Show me how to reach Lanka. Varuna responded. Rama, I cannot stop the waves. Nala is an expert engineer. He will be able to build you a bridge across these waters. I shall support that bridge. With the help of the Varuna army, Nala constructed a bridge made of wood, rocks and stones. Every creature helped in its own way. It took five days to complete the bridge to Lanka. Rama, Hanuman and the Varuna army crossed the bridge by nightfall. 
As they crossed into Lanka, they shouted, Victory to Rama! Ravana's guards observed the construction of the bridge and the arrival of Rama and his army in Lanka and informed Ravana. Mandodari again unsuccessfully tried to convince Ravana to make peace with Rama and release Sita. Ravana ordered all his troops to march towards the city gates. Angada flew to Ravana to ask him to concede and to share that Ravana had supported Vibhishana as king of Lanka. Ravana flew into rage and ordered that Angada be killed. Angada was skillful and thus able to escape capture. When Angada returned to Rama with an account of what happened, Rama ordered his armies to attack. The battle raged for days. Indrajit attacked Rama and Lakshmana with arrows that made them faint. Garuda, the eagle, neutralized Indrajit's arrows and Rama and Lakshmana resumed the fight. Each side suffered terrible losses, much to Rama's dismay. Lakshmana was injured. Hanuman was able to procure the Sanjeevani herb to heal him and restore his health. Fallen warriors lay everywhere. Rama, Lakshmana and the Varna army fought gallantly. Ravana sent skilled soldiers and family members to try and protect Lanka, but nobody returned. Ravana was deceitful and tried to infiltrate Rama's ranks with spies, but this proved ineffective. He employed devious tricks against Rama. He tried to convince Sita that Rama was dead. Eventually, Ravana joined the battle himself. Rama severely wounded Ravana and broke his crown. The Honourable Rama sent Ravana back to his palace to recoup and returned the next day. Ravana was humiliated. Finally, Rama reached for his most powerful weapon, the Brahmastra, to be used only when all else had failed. He took it to his hands. Ravana fell to the ground, defeated. The earth became steady once more. The wind blew softly. The sun shone brighter than ever. Vibhishana and Mandodari mourned the death of Ravana. Following the funeral rites of Ravana, Rama made Vibhishana the king of Lanka. Sita was united with Rama. By now, the period of exile was over. Sri Rama and Mother Sita returned to Ayodhya, where Rama assumed the throne and ruled Kosala wisely for many years, always dutifully followed by his devoted Hanuman. Dear children, what valuable lesson did we learn today? Today's lesson exemplifies the overarching theme of the Ramayana, which is that good always triumphs over evil. Rama gave Ravana ample opportunity to heed good advice, but Ravana refused to listen as he was proud and stubborn. Rama made several attempts to avert the war by sending messengers to convince Ravana to release Sita. Ravana engaged in deceit, but Rama was always truthful, honest, and offered Ravana numerous opportunities to redeem himself. Rama lived in harmony with nature, with the different animals and birds, and with the people of the different tribes. Chetayu, Sampati, Garuda, squirrels, and many other animals helped him in his mission. He accorded them in respect and affection. Rama had the same respect for the learned sages as he did for the animals, birds, and varanas. We learn that living in harmony with nature and all creatures is essential for a happy and balanced world. The Ramayana teaches the importance of honour, loyalty, and behaving dutifully. Honouring one's promises and behaving loyally results in success. Sugriva comes to Rama's aid as promised, and when he sees the error of his ways, he vows to give up alcohol. KK similarly realises that she behaved poorly in insisting that Dashrata banish Rama. She accepts Rama as her rightful king when he returns to Ayodhya. 
Ravana, on the other hand, meets his end when he insists on remaining on his destructive and evil path, rather than choosing a more righteous path. This suggests that it is never too late to make decisions that will bring one closer to goodness. As this is the final class, dear children, we hope the lessons have helped pique your interest to read the story of the Divine Prince. Happy reading. Om Namo Narayanaya.